All right, welcome to the internet. Hebrews 13, verse 6. The writer says, So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Okay? Sounds like a pretty good verse, doesn't it? So let's look at some things. Who then should I fear? Turn to Matthew 25, uh, Psalm 25. When there's somebody that you can't possibly beat, that's the guy you fear. Uh, if you can't possibly handle him, you know, I fear him because there's nothing you can do about it. Now, I don't have to defeat the devil. He's already been defeated. I have the victory in 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, I claim that. Uh, every day of my life, but I want to go through some verses here. In Psalm 25, look in verse 14. The secret of the Lord, and there is a secret in there. Paul talks about it, but there is a secret. The secret of the Lord is with them that what? Fear him. And he will show them his covenant. Now, of course, I understand the covenant being Israel, but this verse is still to be considered. Even Paul talked about the Psalms. Look at verse 8, Psalm 85. 85. And whatsoever things are written aforetime, written for our learning. So we're reading the, what were written aforetime. In Psalm 85, look in verse 9. Surely his salvation is nigh them that what? Fear him. That glory may dwell in our land. And I'm pretty sure that's what's wrong with America. Uh, Romans chapter 1 is what's wrong with America. There's no fear of God before their eyes. Look in Psalm 128. Psalm 128. Verse 4. Behold that thus shall the man be blessed that what? Feareth the Lord. Okay, so the Lord is to be feared. Uh, look in Romans 1 where I was talking about. And I apologize. Well, get Psalm 23rd. Now you're familiar with that, but we'll look at that in this light. But I want you to go first to uh, uh, Romans 1. The reason people don't fear the Lord is they don't put any stock in the authority of the Bible. And most people have been discouraged by religion that denies the Lord that they preach. Religion says one thing and does another. Um, I, take, I can tell you a story about a man. When I first went to Arkansas many years ago, the Reed family started coming to the Bible class. And that was Charles Reed and Dolores Reed and Tammy and... Larry and Janet, whatever. Uh, the first one that I really had contacted was Larry when I worked on a railroad. And he had trouble coming to Bible class because he worked all the time. And I knew what that was because I worked on a railroad at time, one time. But then his wife came, Janet. And then one day, one class, Mrs. Reed walked in. Now, Mrs. Reed was a Pentecostal, Assembly of God, uh, applesauce cake whatever they are, and she came in, and she sat and listened the first night, and she came up, and she said, well, Brother Jay, I, I believe most everything you preached. I said, well, come back. And she, next week, she come by, she said, I never heard nothing like that in my life, because I went a little bit different with her, and she began to see it. Well, when Charles came, her husband, it took several months. I had to go visit with him. They didn't think he'd ever come. He came. Within a month, he trusted the Lord and read the Bible through. Uh, I think six months, whatever. But Mrs. Reed had a daddy that was a purebred religionist. She had six brothers and sisters. 
and he told every one of them, stay away from me. I mean, he was point blank about it too. Stay away from that Bible class. He got sick, went in the hospital, and got scared. And his eldest boy came up to him in the class, in the in the house uh, of the room. He said, "Dad, you pumped this religion all our life to us. Why are you scared now?" And he had no answer. See, there's a difference in a believer. Fear is a common thing in the flesh. The flesh wants to live. But a fear of the Lord overcomes because with the fear of the Lord, there's peace. That, that sounds strange, but with the fear of the Lord comes peace. And it's all written down by Paul. And so Mrs. Reed told me that story later on. But none of those kids ever came because of that daddy. And... Uh, People see what the Catholic Church has been doing with their priests. They see what Jimmy Swaggart has done. They see what all these preachers have done and been glorified, and then what they did wrong made manifest by the press. Okay? Uh, and that causes people not to want to have anything to do with it. And the God of the world is very happy with that. He also does it another way. He makes the churches grow monetarily wise because they think that great gain is godliness. And Paul instructs Timothy on that. That's not the way it goes either. He said, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. So when the churches grow, it's automatically considered that that is a godly church because God is blessing it. But it ain't God that's blessing it. It's the people blessing it because they don't fear the Lord. They fear the religion that's been told to them. You don't get to church, you know, God will get you. They don't quit sinning, God will get you for that. If you don't quit this, God will get you for that. Blah, 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 blah. And they walk in fear. God doesn't give the spirit of fear to a believer. Paul's clear on that too. We're, we'll get to all that. But in Romans chapter 1, is the gospel of Christ the power of God unto salvation? Let's see, verse 15. So as much as him he is, I'm ready to preach religion to you. No, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. So if that's the only verse we have, we're kind of in doubt what the gospel is, right? I asked a man the other night, what's the gospel? I mean, we had a, a heck of a fight Monday night in the Bible class in Panama City. Guy called me Satan, the devil, and the Antichrist. I mean, he, he stood up and he said, You're nothing but the devil and Antichrist. Then turned right around and said, But I love you. <laughs> and I said, No, you don't. You're a liar. You don't love me at all. And you don't love these people. In. I love these people in here. I'm trying to get it all. I'm trying to straighten you out. I said, You ain't straightening nobody out. You're lost. I said, What's the gospel? And he said, Well, Christ died for our sins and so that we can repent. I said, You're lost. That's not what the gospel says. I said, I ain't got nothing to repent of except change my mind who saved me. And see, they think repentance is a turn around, no sin anymore. Repentance in your mind is quit trying to save yourself and fear the one that saved you. Amen. That's what he talks about. And the secret's with those that fear him. Salvation is with them that fear him. And on and on. So you have in verse 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Has it clarified now what gospel he's ready to preach to them? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I mean, I couldn't take that verse and say something else. I mean, if he's ready to preach the gospel and now he identifies it as the gospel of Christ, then the gospel of Christ is what power God unto salvation, right? Unto what? To everyone that believes him. It's not the power of God to anybody that don't believe. The power of God to the people that don't believe. Why? If our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. It's not that they don't believe something. They believe not the gospel of Christ. Okay? If you want to believe it, it's the Jew first and also the Greek. Okay? Now. For therein, that's in the gospel of Christ, is the righteous God revealed. 
from faith to faith. How can I walk in here on Sunday morning and do you any good if I don't know the faith and the faith is the gospel of Christ? Folks, the faith is the gospel of Christ. He died for our sins, according to Scripture, and was buried and rose again the third day. And every bit of that activity took his faith. And if we don't know the faith, we don't know the gospel. People say most of the time, they say, I'm reasonably sure my friend or my relative is saved. Yeah, why don't they want to come and listen then? People make excuses for people. Don't make any excuse. Call a pig a pig. Look at that pig running over there. What are you, stupid? That's one of Harold's cows. <laughs> Can't tell the difference between a cow and a pig. I went hunting one time up in Arkansas up on the mountain where they dug the quarry out for the dam. When they, I mean, they, they built a conveyor belt from the mountain and flipping to Bull Shoals and would put rock on it and take it to the crusher mill down by the dam where they were building it. I mean, that's, we're talking miles. And that mountain up there was good deer hunting up in that area. So I mean, a buddy of mine, he, he's a, familiar with all that area more than I was. I was in the mountain home. Went up there and I sat in the truck, back of the truck. We were fixing to go hunting that afternoon. And these two guys pulled up, brought their guns out in boxes. Now that's a bad indication. New boxes. <laughs> and I'm looking at him and I said, you ever shot that guy? No. Huh? And I said, uh, Earl, which direction are they going? <laughs> and I went the other direction. I was told many years ago there that a guy actually killed a goat and tagged it. And brought it to the game board. <coughs> thinking it was a deer. <laughs> <laughs> so there's not, it's not safe out there, folks. <laughs> the drivers ain't safe. Folks, there ain't nothing safe out there. They're driving, walking, running, eating. Nothing safe. It's all fear of the Lord. Okay. Now watch, he said, For therein is the right of God revealed from faith to faith that is written, The just shall live, how? By faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteous of men who hold the truth in unrighteous, because that which may be known of God is manifest to them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they're without excuse, because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. There's things that you need to glorify God for. Number one, is he the creator of heaven and earth? Is he invisible? Is he able to exceed above all you ask or think? Is he seated far above all heavens? Has he defeated the devil with his son? Is his son the faith? It is. That's the faith of God. Uh, is God... <clears throat> Got any age on him? <laughs> you have no idea. Didn't you? One day with the Lord is as a thousand years. Alpha and Omega. So it's not as, is he getting gray and old and crippled? Has <laughs> God got arthritis? Somebody said one time when Elijah said, perhaps your God is out pursuing, that word pursuing is going to the bathroom. That's what it really means. I mean, he's mocking them Baal worshipers. Said, Perhaps your God's out going to the bathroom. I bet you never thought about God going to the bathroom, did you? <laughs> so he's mocking their gods into a manly God. Uh, the gods that you see around in the world, aren't they made with hands and then looked at and worshipped? Yes. Uh, the, the Catholic Church has to have the statue of Mary holding the baby. The baby don't do you any good. Uh, they got all kinds of statues of men. Uh, they called them saints and whatever. Had St. Christopher hang from the mirror. You had all kinds of saints. They saint people there. Uh, what was her name? The, the old nun that they sainted? Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa. I, I told the guys in from Catholic Church one time, I said, Mother Teresa might be in hell. Oh! 
Boy, that hit him. Guy's still coming after four years. Now he sees she probably is. The gospel of Christ is the only thing going to keep you from going to death and hell, folks. That's the power of God to keep you from it. And it's called the faith of God, which is in his son. He had faith in his son. His son had the faith to do it. And the faith of God is the son doing the work that man couldn't do. He's the example of what God really wanted on earth. God made Adam to live that way, and Adam failed because of the God of this world. The God of this world could not defeat Jesus Christ. And he thought he did when he got him killed. And God used that killing to let him die for our sins. And that's a secret. And the secret's with them that fear him to watch. Verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but because uh, became vain in their imagination, their foolish heart was darkened. Uh, isn't that what 2 Corinthians chapter 3 is about, reading the Old Testament, darkened their heart? Uh, isn't it about darkness? Who has blinded? Blinded is darkness, is it not? Well, then he's used the word here, and he's telling you, blinded their heart. And by the way, is the heart deceitful? Can a blinded heart think it's right? Of course. Of course it does. It's like I read, I don't know how many verses Monday night, and the guy said, I'm going to straighten you out. I didn't write what I read. It was read. And I said, what you just did to me calling me Satan, Antichrist. I said, the only thing different than that, you didn't call me a pestilent little fellow like they did Paul. I said, you persecuted me just like they did Paul for reading Paul. And then I said, you know, I've had enough of you. And I went and sat down by one of the persons in the class, and the class took over and nailed him. <laughs> Each one of them just hammered him with verse after verse. And, he just, and finally, I said, folks, I'm fixing to leave. You can do whatever you want with him. And I walked out, and they were still working on him. I hope he got home. No, I really don't. <laughs> All right. Verse 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became what? Fools. Then a man that professes to be wise, he is a what? Fool. He's a fool. Change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man to birds, four-footing beasts, creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. <clears throat> that matches Ephesians 2, verse 2. And three, where Paul walked, said they walked according to the lust of their flesh. And Paul was not a sinner like people think sin is. He said, touching the righteous of the law, blameless. Paul, Saul of Tarsus was probably as religious a person that walked at that time. And his religion and the zeal in that religion persecuted the right thing and killed it. That's what he said, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then in what he was doing wouldn't it be that the lust of his heart he was dishonoring his own body between themselves what did God do for your body he bought it didn't he does he give you the right to be saved is that his will and for the spirit of Christ to indwell in you did he buy your body, which is the problem, obviously. The soul and the spirit indwell in the body. The mind indwells in the body. And he bought the price, the ransom, for us to live. This is Bearden's favorite verse. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh... I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So the Son of God's faith gave you right to be born. Now I want you to put that out in years. First century, Jesus Christ died. He's about 33 years old, okay? I don't know how they do it. Is B.C. before birth to Christ? 
A.D. is after the, the cross or after his birth? Is it after birth? I thought A.D. was after death. A.B. would be after birth. I'm just kidding. I, I like it, George. I don't, I'm not from, I don't know for sure. But one thing, you got Daniel's prophecy. You got the prophecy of Jesus coming. Then you got the prophecy of suffering. Now his suffering's at AD 33, or, or uh, 33 and a half years old. Is that AD 33? Yeah. You, you guys know more than I probably on that. Is it AD 33? So it had to be after birth, right? He's 33 years old because at 30 years old, he's baptized of John, and he walks thir- three and a half years with him. So at 33 years old, Jesus dies. That's 33 years into the first century, right? What century is this? Now, you're not going to find any prophecy about the 21st century. Nowhere. You can't even find that time in the Bible. All you can find is seven years and a thousand years. That's a thousand seven plus 33. You're, what are we living in? See what I'm saying? If you take that Bible, what are we living in? One day is with the Lord is a thousand years. It's four thousand years to the birth of Christ. So somewhere in there we're getting close to maybe 2,000 years, aren't we? This is 2010, but we're not, no, we're not right on tune with God's timing. We have all these extra days and extra things and on and on. But let's say we're getting close to 2,000 years. But you got to maybe subtract seven from that. Tribulation. Then you got 1,000 years. What if I take 4,000 at Christ and add... 2,000 more, how many is that? And if I got one more day as 1,000 years, which is the rest, that's the millennium. And it's called the rest. God rests because somebody's been put away for 1,000 years. Are you with me? Folks, you might be close. Maybe Trump is the last Trump. Oh. Oh. (laughs) Now listen, folks. He reached out there 2,000 years and seen Robert Simpkins. Robert belligerent. He didn't want to come to Bible class. Catherine kept talking to him real nice. He's like, honey. So he finally comes. And he found out, old brother Jerry, he's an ordinary cuss, but he's not so bad after all. (laughs) But he got to reading and looking, and he found a truth that God let him have the time to get to. That's called long-suffering. Why? Do you think what's going on today is any different than it was in the middle of the 2,000 years at the 1,000-year mark? Was man still vile? Was our earth still, uh, the, the world still wicked? Was the devil still around? Was there bad weather then? Was there good weather then? Was there sickness then? Was there illness then? Was there health then? Ain't nothing bothering the one that handles it all. That's the one you better fear. quite obvious. Now watch this. Uh, Had to cut in on time. Uh, Verse 30. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things. Oh, Oh. Inventors of evil things. thought I'd read that again. Disobedient to parents. Without understanding. 
covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Now, as you think about this, there's no fear of God before their eyes. How many people you know even consider reading their Bible? Folks, fear of the Lord right here. You ain't going to see feel him and touch him. Fear of the Lord's in that word. And this word must have some power or your flesh wouldn't resist it. Your flesh resists the word. It don't want to read it. It don't really want anything to do with it because as it reads it, there's nothing good in there to say about you. There isn't really anything good about it. Now watch. Uh, look with me in Matthew 10. By the way, you believe Peter believed? Why in the world would he deny the Lord? Not in his spirit. That's before he was given the Holy Spirit. Because in Acts 4, he don't. You ever think about that? He feared the people. Why did Elijah go get her under a juniper tree from Jezebel? He just killed 450 prophets with a sword. I'm pretty sure he's got some guts. And he run off from Jezebel. Keep that in mind, men. Fear Jezebel went and hid under a juniper tree. God hollered at him. What you doing over there under that juniper tree? Well, you know that Jezebel. What? Do you believe God? Do you believe in God? Do you believe Jesus exists? Do you believe that word's pure? Yes. Get in it. You're going to need it. You're really going to need it. You're going to need it more and more every day of your life. I believe from now on especially. Things are turning the screws right now. That things are working. And it's working. And folks, the godless world don't need the world. He has it. He's the God of it. He doesn't need the children of disobedience. He's got them. He's after you. If you're a believer, he's coming for you, baby. And as he's coming, he's going to use anybody he wants to get to you. He don't care about money. He don't care about power. He's got it. He don't care about things. He hates the truth. And he'll fight the truth day in and day out all the time to stop it. Adam and Eve were walking truth. They've been told what not to do and what they could do by God. They're walking truth. So he goes in there and he attacks the weak source. The weak source being Eve at that time. And he gets them to deny what God said. God's world is after you to deny what God said. He's trying to make it hard for you living, existing, having, or doing. And as he works against you, this evil world's right with him because he's the God of it. Paul said in Colossians chapter 3, set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. For your life is hid. Ain't you glad he hid it? Because if we were given two metal balls and put in a room, we'd break one and lose the other. He hid our life. Nothing can bother it. Nothing can separate it. 
Nothing can bother it at all. We have very clear verses on this, Romans 8, 31 to the end of the chapter. We have very good verses of Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 4. We have all kinds of Colossians chapter 1, 2, and 3. Well, matter of fact, the whole book of Colossians is tremendous reading that nothing, don't let no man judge you, and things like into that written down by Paul. But now watch, in Matthew 10, verse 27. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. What do you mean by that, Lord? What I tell you in darkness. Okay. You got, you got your apostles here. All around them is darkness. Jesus is telling them in darkness to them so that they can speak it as light. We walk our daily life in darkness, but we're the light. Don't you... Just remind me, Ephesians chapter 4, uh, 3, and no, Ephesians chapter 5 in just a minute. But no, let's read this. He said, What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, and what you hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill what? Say it out loud. But are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Mm. Sounds a little rough, don't it? Well, who do you reckon that is I'm supposed to fear? God the Father. Well, of course. Look, Luke 22. This comparison again with this. Luke 22. In Luke 22, verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, everybody there? He said, The Lord said, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. So that tells you what he has the power to do, or of the ability to do, not so much power, the ability to do that. <clears throat> that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee. Well, I think about Romans 8, 26. We know not what we should pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit itself makes the intercession for, for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I have no idea what's going on around me. I have no idea what's going to happen. But I have an intercessor. I don't know what to pray for. I know how to pray, but I don't know what to pray for. It didn't say I didn't know how to pray. I mean, he tells us time and time again, pray without ceasing, pray, pray, pray. It's not that I can't pray. I don't know what to pray for. I have no idea of what's coming, so I can't set up a prayer blockage, you might say. So I don't know what, but the, the Spirit maketh intercession with groanings, which cannot be uttered. So he's praying to the Father. Now, I have no prayer intercessor if I don't have the Spirit of Christ in me. And I don't have the Spirit of Christ in me if I don't have the gospel of Christ as my salvation. Ephesians chapter 1 says, uh, In whom you heard after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And that Holy Spirit of promise comes into us by hearing the gospel of our salvation, which is the gospel of Christ. And as it's in us, it prays to the Father, makes intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered, because we have no idea what's coming on this earth. But as we pray, we turn it over to the Father in fear. We fear the one that has the ability to know. I don't fear him as a father that wants to kill me. I don't fear him as a father that wants to 
bruised me up and chastised me and beat me up. I fear him because he's the creator of heaven and earth. And I fear him because he can do whatever he wants. And in that fear, I know he'll do what's right. Because he's a righteous God. And so as I fear him that way, I turn it over to him. I redo my test, right, Craig? <laughs> We've all been in situations where a delay, a momentary delay in our life may have saved our life, say, in a wreck. Kathy and I were supposed to leave one time from Arkansas, and something fell off or something happened to the car and I had to fix it, and it delayed me a couple of hours. Mad as fire. Oh, it's mad as fire. Come find out where we would have been. They had 20 or 30 car pileup. And we checked the time. It was the right time. God just says, I don't think I'll let you go right now. Everybody's been in that kind of situation, a believer. Other people wouldn't acknowledge that. They just, that time and luck. The luck of the draw. No, we know it's Ecclesiastes. There is a time. God showed us the time. He said, there's a time. There was a specific time when Jesus came. He said, when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made a woman, made of the law, to bring those that were under the law out. Then he gave a specific time called the dispensation of grace. And he reaches out there. And he, and a kid born in 1950 who had no desire whatsoever to be religious. Then later on got religious a little bit. And then didn't want nothing to do with it because I was seeing what was going on around me. And then for a long time we didn't have nothing to do with any of it. Then one day I trusted the Lord. I trusted him to be the Savior, not me. I trusted it didn't have anything to do with me. It didn't have anything with me changing. It didn't have anything to do with me keeping. I trusted him because it belongs to him, not me. Hey, homeboys, we're walking on his dirt. We're breathing his air. We're seeing his stuff. We're touching his stuff. Everything you own, God gave you. He let you have it because it all came from earth. And the earth's his. And he said, you don't need to build me a building. Earth is my footstool. I don't need your help. Well, what does man think? God needs our help. I don't need your help for anything. And the great piece of it is, is when you turn that over to him, and as you pray... You know by God's word through Paul that intercession is being made for you. You know that nothing can ever separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus because it's written down also. You know you have access to the Father. That's written down. You know that you're accepted in the beloved, not you. That's written down. You know you have redemption and a day of redemption is coming. That's written down. You know you're forgiven. Through the blood of Christ. You know you've been reconciled to God. All that's written down by who? Paul. The secret of the Lord. It's written down. Okay. Luke 22. Is that where I told you? All right. In Luke 22. Look with me in verse 31. Yes. Simon Peter. Yeah. Yeah. In Luke 22. Are you talking about Matthew? In Luke, okay. In Luke 22, uh, verse 31, is that where I told you? Yes. Yeah. And the Lord said unto Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had... And, uh, why would Satan go after Simon? Who was given the keys? Or would be? Oh, yeah. He's going after the authority. Why did Satan persecute Paul? He's the apostle of the Gentiles. I mean, you look at the scriptures. Um, why did Satan go after Job? Undoubtedly, he's the one man that God really cares for. And Satan says, yeah, I know, but you let me turn loose on him. We'll see what happens. Okay, but you can't kill him. 
Don't you ever think about that? If uh, Do all things work together for good? To them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Like preaching. I have to run the guide of First and Second Timothy as my ministry. And the reason is there's so many things in there that are being denied in the world preaching today. Uh, women preachers, boom, gone in First Timothy. Uh, des desire to be wealthy, boom, gone in First Timothy 6. Uh, I died and went to the light. Boom, gone, 1 Timothy 6. It's all kinds of things that I have to look at. Well, is that going to make me well-liked? No. But is it going to be right if I stick with it? Set your affection on things above, homeboy. I added that word, by the way. <laughs> Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Are we blessed with all spiritual blessings where? In heavenly places. Why? We're not promised the earth. We do not have Matthew 5, 5. We do not inherit the earth. We're up there. Our life is hid up there. Our Savior is seated up there. And with him seated there, he's doing the mediation and the intercession for us. Well, when the Lord's talking to Simon, you know who's coming after you, Simon. I guess he's kind of giving him a warning. Guess who's coming? I mean, you know, you ever think about as you read what they had to look forward to? I mean, you got a resume, and you want a good job, you want a vacation, you want to get a retirement. Hey, I'm retired, whatever. Hey, look what they're looking forward to. What Simon figure the devil's going to do? Sift him like wheat if possible. But the Lord prayed for him. Hmm. Let's read it. I prayed for thee that thy faith shall uh, fail not. Wait a minute. Didn't he deny him three times? But he didn't have the spirit. He wasn't given to laughter. And just to make you sure you understand that. And by the way, was Simon ready to die, he thought, for the Lord? He said, I'll give my life for you. Well, why'd you die three times then? <laughs> fear, folks. Fear factor right now in the world. Don't have the fear. Don't let them have it. Don't let them rule your life. Be a believer. Shut the news off. That's Ephesians 5, folks. I've got some choice words for them, but I ain't going to say them. <laughs> Don't meditate on it. Philippians 4. Matter of fact, go there. <clears throat> Philippians 4. All right, shut up here. Philippians 4. Walk as a child of light. That's Ephesians 5. Redeem the time. You know, God's giving you time right now. Get in his word and study some more. Get a little comfort. Get a little more faith, you might say. Be filled with the Spirit, you might say. You know, they're all talking, oh, I fill you with the Spirit. You ain't going to get filled with the Spirit unless you read. You ain't getting no more Christ's spirit as far as the spirit itself. That's the seal. But you can flat get his mind. See, didn't you start out as a baby? A babe in Christ. Then grow. Grow up to be a man in Christ. And that's obviously with the Ephesians and Colossians letter. Uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 4 rejoice in the Lord always again I say rejoice let your moderation that's your yieldingness to the one you fear. That's your yieldingness to the one that can take care of business. Do you think God's surprised by anything going on? See, he did not even surprise that guy who wrote the book in 2020 there would be a bacterial thing come through, a virus come through. And it's written down in 98. That's a plan. Sounds like somebody planned that baby out, didn't it? 
Well, well. Okay, now, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Now, maybe your request didn't get met the way you prayed, but did the Lord make intercession for you with groanings which cannot be uttered? So, take what you get. That Paul pretty well says that in his letters, I think he said that, uh, I've learned to be, uh, uh, let's see, Philippians chapter 2, do all things without murmuring, disputing. And where does he say that? Um, uh, oh, verse 11 of chapter 4. Verse 11, not that I speak in respect of want, for I've learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be what? Can you? You can if you read. And you can if you believe God. Because if you believe God, you'll say, this is what he wanted. A lot of times I'll look at things and I won't buy them. And then I say, Lord, please let it sell tonight or tomorrow so I know I won't need it. Yes, we're Gentiles and we like signs. Didn't say we required them. Gentiles love signs. Yes. Hey, the comedian said, here's your sign. Oh, whatever. Uh, but let's read on. He said, Be careful of nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And know what? The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Brother Jerry, how could we be comfortable in this? The peace of God. How can we be comfortable in the evil world? In a vile body. In the Lord. In the Lord himself. I was really concerned about some things this week. Stupid that I am. And the Lord took care of it. Helped my wife. Of course, it helped me. It was just settled. God settles things for us. Sometimes he lets us go through things, but he settles it later. Are we that dumb we don't look back and see it? Maybe we ought to look at our life and see all right, he says, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So the heart's working against you, and so is the mind. Well, that's a double whammy, ain't it? Now watch. And finally, brethren, whatsoever. Now you just read this with me. Whatsoever things are, true. say it again. True. Where's the only true thing you can find? The Word of God. Oh. I guess you'd be better off for watching John Wayne, wouldn't you? <laughs> Cowboy movie. Dad, you watching them black and whites again? Yeah, at least they're not so vile. These modern movies deny the Lord every time you turn around. We deny who knocked the towers down. I don't care whether it's a conspiracy or what. The ones that are blamed, though, we deny it right now. We've got other people in office, the same kind of religion. Did we forget? Yes, we did. And it's all set up. You know what's set up also? Ephesians chapter 4. The day of redemption. Say, so maybe in our life. Wouldn't it, be God, wouldn't, it be, wouldn't it be something if we went out alive? Do you know that possibility? We have that possibility as believers. We wish our alive or remains should be called up. That could be this Sunday. What's the day? What's the date? The 15th might be our rector day. <laughs> Somebody said, well, boy, that's really going to tear the world up. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. They'd probably be glad. Matter of fact, if you do your witness, they will be glad when you leave bothersome, pestilent little fellas. They're glad they're gone. Get tired of hearing them all the way talking about the salvation of God. They tell me, I, don't, I can do anything. Well, that's what that guy said the other night. He said, are, are you telling, oh, I know, you guys believe once saved, always saved. I said, yeah, you want to see it? Huh? He wants to see it. I think that's where the class took over on him. All right, he said, Think on these things. What? Finally, the things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. 
whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, what are you supposed to do? Turn it off. Think on these things. Open that Bible up when you get to doubt and look, oh, hey, this is what God said. I guess I don't have to worry about that after all. Look what God said here to Paul. Wow. Uh, matter of fact, just, and I'll shut up. 2 Timothy 3. Verse 1. 2 Timothy 3, 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Perilous times for the believers. For men should be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, huh, without natural affection. Now, the Lord said, What shall a man gain if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? There are men in this world right now that want to gain it all. They want it all. And they don't care who's in the way. They have no idea what spirit's leading them. They would consider themselves people that are right in their own eyes. And they want it all. They're not satisfied with what they've got. They want it all. They want more and more and more. And it is a process of manipulation. And manipulation causes mass hysteria, if done right. And that's what's happening. Well, stick with the truth. Turn to Ephesians, I'll shut up. Ephesians 5. Hey, Brother Jerry, that's easier to say than do. Never said it was easy. If you're a human, I'm a human. We're flesh. But we can fear the Lord. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. For ye were sometimes what? But now are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Mm, walking witness, proving what is acceptable. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather, what? <coughs> Reprove them, for it's a shame to even speak of those things which are done to them in secret. Oh. Mm -hmm. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he say, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine for his excess, but be filled with what? That's the knowledge that establishes you and comforts you and gives you peace and security. Nothing's messing up God's plan. He's got it secure. Because you're sealed unto the day of redemption. Even though we're accounted as sheep for the slaughter, we are loved by the Father who has adopted us as children. And as children, he makes intercession for us. He can do exceedingly above all that we ask or think. Tells us to pray without ceasing and rejoice because we're his. Amen? Amen. I appreciate you being here.